doing, y'all, I did not know that that article was going to be that long. By the time I looked at it and decided to look at the time, I knew the article was lengthy. But again, y'all, it has to be part two because I ain't playing, paying for the three-hour plan. That's a little too much of right now. But I'm still going to have to do this again where I make it two parts. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this particular um, one because I was talking about how she shot her teen. A uh, teenage boy in his leg, or shot him when it was like some type of um, I forgot what they called like a pebble, a pebble bullet, or one of those type of, of I can't a BB guns or something like that. I forgot they said it was in a neighbor's backyard for making too much noise and for answering her er, and for as a complaint where she understood as racial insults. Yet the ups of her life could be almost as uh, vigorous as the downs. In 1987, just a year after she was sent to the hospital in a straitjacket, her charmingly upbeat 1959 recording, If My Baby Just Cares For Me, was chosen by Chanel for its international television ad campaign. Re-released, the record went gold in France and platinum in England. In 1991, she sold out a uh, song at Olympia in Paris for almost a week. She toured widely during her final years. In Seattle, in the summer of 2001, she worked a tirade against George, Bush, George W. Bush into Mississippi and encouraged the audience to go and do something about that man. She was already a uh, sufferer from breast cancer, but it wasn't the worst illness she had known. Well, I kind of wonder if what she would say now. You know, I'm just going to leave it alone. But if she was still meant to be here, uh, you know, if she was still here alive... Um, I wonder what she was saying now. <laughs> she was, uh, she was seen as a relic of the civil rights era, and on occasion even led the audience to a wistful sing along "We Shall Overcome." Although she did not believe her country had overcome nearly enough, once she had became too sick to perform, she did not return to what she called the United Snakes of America. See, like I said, if she says, you know, she would have a lot, I think, to say about President Ford, you know, for 45, you know what I mean, if she was still here, okay. She died in France in April 2003. Her ashes were scattered in several African countries. The most indelible image of her near the end uh, uh, is at a stoop, uh, a, a stoop old lady react, uh, uh, reacting to the enthusiastic cheers that greeted her with a raised, close fist pow- back power salute. 34 years after Simone released Young, Gifted, and Black, Jay-Z reused the title for a song that describes the fate of many of those gifted children. Here are the screens from all, the, all from the ghetto and all the teens stuck in metal in a 21st century America. The rap connection with Simone is, har- is hardly surprising, since rap is where black anger is now open, openly resides. Simone dislikes the rap she knew, however, in part of displacing so much anger on, on to women, or, as she put it, for letting people believe that women are second class and calling them bitches and stuff like that. Back in, ni- ni- back in 1996, Lauren Hill rapped on any anything you can do retort to or to a male counterpart. So while you imitating Al Capone, I'll be Nina Simone and capricating, uh, deprecating on your microphone. But but no one really has taken the, ch- the up the challenge of Simone's example. There was a minor uproar last year over Kanye West sampling the phrases from Simone's recording "Strange Fruit" with her voice speeding up to a unrecognizable tinny tinniness in "The Blood on the Leaves," in which Simone's Ecovation of the lynch uh, black bodies um um is juxtaposed with West's personal concerns about uh, second string bitches cocaine. This is sadly it's not prime. This is Kanye we're talking about. A uh, second string bitches cocaine and the cost of paying off a ba- baby mama versus a new Mercedes. Some people have seen a social statement here, but. No one can help recalling Simone's broader reaction to rap. Hell, Martin and Malcolm would turn in their graves if they ain't heard some of this crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, she, she probably right. <laughs> anyway, let me finish this. Okay. As for Jazz, Simone was largely excluded from the history books for decades. Wow. Will Fresh was a... Uh, 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 Seminole Jazz Sing of 1990 mentioned her only in passing as 
off-putting and uncommunicative, and as the center of the cult that only her faithful understand. But Simone's extralism was slowly widening the the word definition of jazz singing. And ever since President Jim Kennedy and Obama list her list her version of Center Man as one of his ten favorite songs of all time in 2008, the cult has gone mainstream. There are now a bungling field of what may be called Simone's studies. Ruth Festing's How It Feels to Be Free and Richard Elliott's Nina Simone offer two highly intelligent examples and Fredward's even more authoritative volume of 2010's A Bar for God to the Great Jazz and Pop Singers includes a Netflix interest to on Simone that pronounces her more important than anyone in her influence on the 21st century jazz singing. singing. Last year, two Broadway shows depicted Simone as an inspiration for a couple unexpected figures. In A, a, a Night with Jazz Joplin, she helped to provide her, her white soul sister with the gift of fire. And even stranger, and a crew, but in that's the soul doctor, which reopens off Broadway this winter, she she was the force behind a rock and roll rabbi, Simone Car- Carly Barb. Nutty as any scene on stage, Simone's uh, acquaintance with the rabbi appeared to have some base, uh, basis in fact, and helps to explain the Hebrew songs that she performed at the Village Gate, where he also performed in the early 60s. While it may be a showbiz extravagation to suggest that the rabbi and the jazz singer had an affair, the show featured Act 1 curtain uh, clinch that, on the night I saw it, had its largely orthodox audience literally gasping. The point was the universality of Simone's message about persecution, the search for justice, and the power of music. Back in 1979, at a concert in Philadelphia, Simone followed a performance of four women by scolding the black women in the audience about their changes in style. You used to be talking about being natural, wearing natural hairstyles. Now you're straining your hair, roaching your cheeks, and dressing out of vogue. In 2009, the comedian Chris Rock made a documentary called Good Hair because he explained his young daughter had come with him with the question, Gaddy, how come I don't have good hair? For an African-American child, nothing had changed since Harry Bontefante's mother's advice more than half a century earlier. According to once contented businessman in Rock's film, African-Americans put uh, uh, 12 percent of the population by 80 percent of the uh, of the hair products in the co- in this country. As for skin tone, the cosmetic co- uh, companies have been expanding their range ever since Al- Almen established a line of darker radiations in 1994. Although in March 2014, a former be- uh, beauty director of Essence, Aretha uh, Busby, complained to the Times, the companies tend to stop back Kerry Washington. I love to see brands go two three shades darker. Like I said, this came out about, this article came about, what, about five something years ago? I forgot, you know, looking at, I, like I said, I've been reading, 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 reading. Uh, we all know, like, such companies as, like, uh, Rihanna's Fenty um, line. I think um, Super Sense Crayon Case probably carries that, too. But, you know, certain lines like that that carry um, shades that, you know, go past carrying Washington's shade. The question of skin tone and hair and their meaning for African American women exploded on the internet with an announcement of casting Zendana on the Hollywood biopic about Simone. When the idea for such a film was initially floated in the early 90s, Simone herself gave the nod to be being played by Whoopi Goldberg. When in 2010, the present film was announced in the Hollywood Reporter, Major Blige's reigning queen hip hop song was announced for the lead. Once Blige was replaced, was replaced with Sedena, however, a woman whose skin tones more than three times, two, through, through two to three times shaded lighter than Simone's, the crimes were born kind of film on the basis of risk reputation, on the basis of insult, were instainless. Instainless. Why not cast Viola Davis or Jennifer Hudson's production photograph showing Sedena on a set with our artificial broad nose and an afro wig and undoubtedly, but un- um, mis- unfortunately, dark makeup that is all too easily confoundable with blackface render any hope of calm discussion full time. It has been suggested that filmmakers might as well cast Tyler Perry in a Medea, in a full Medea drag. You know, <laughs> sorry, y'all, I'd be the laughing. 
You, you, you all think that Terry Tyler Perry, if he could, he would have made a version of a Nina Simone movie. Mm, that could have been messed up. Okay, Simone's daughter has come out against the film because the story focuses on an invented love affair as much as the casting for Sandino, although she's quick to point out how much her mother's parents shaped her life. Lisa once told an interviewer that her mother would sometimes uh, traumatize her because she is light-skinned, and I remind her that she has chosen my father. I didn't. The fight over the film ultimately extended to a lawsuit filed by the director, Cynthia Mort, against the British production company, Early Student Enterprises, on the very eve of the screening of the, uh, at the Cannings. Since then, though, the suit has been dismissed. So Nina may ha- may yet show up in a theater near you. And so Nina may be given a compelling performance. May well prove that she can play not only women who are sci-fi blue as an avatar, or green as in Guardian of in Galaxy, but but real life black. She, I forgot, yeah, come to think about it, she do be playing roles in, in different colors and different species. Okay, uh, still, there, there is no escaping the fact that her casting represents exactly the sort of prejudice that Simone was always up, always up against. I was never on the cover of Ebony or Jet, Simone had told, had told an interview in 1980. They want white-looking women like Diana Ross, light and bright. Or, as Mark Mar Hill writes in Ebony Today, there's no greater evidence of how tragic things are for dark-skinned women in Hollywood than the fact that they can't even get hired to play dark-skinned women. Well, beyond Hollywood, these outworn habits taste reverberate down to the generation affecting all of us. Simone's favorite performer in her later years was Michael Jackson. She brought cassettes of his albums with, with her everywhere. And... Called her, uh, called having him, uh, having, having met him on a plane when he was a little boy, and tell him, "Don't let them change you." Ooh, he sure didn't listen to her. Or you know what? Uh, you know, let me stop. You're black and you're beautiful. Let me stop. She anguished over her, over his evident failure to believe what she said. The facial surgeries, the mysterious lightening of his skin, the vitality of believing instead of what the culture had told him, and wanting to be white. Simone appeared on stage with him just once, a Miss Huge Cash performance gathered for Nelson Medellia, 80th birthday in Jonesburg in the summer of, of 1998. She was 65 years old, and the photo, photographs of the event show her standing between uh, Mandel and Jackson. Oh, wait, but, you're good, but yet glamorously undubbed. Her hair piled, piled in braids and her strapless white blouse a contrast to the African costumes of the chorus all around. But she was also very frail. In one photograph, Jackson, in his glittery trademark military-style jacket and hat and shades, holds her left hand in both his hands in a gesture of affection. Aww. But in another shot, he has put one steady arm around her, and she's gasping for his hand for support. Aww. A few people seem aware of what is happening. The stage remains a joyful laugh in the song, a joyous African celebration. And at its center, two Americans stand with hands clasped tight. One hand notably dark, the other one notably fair. Although trying to help each other along, a hard and endless road. Okay. Ooh, she... I think she wrote a whole short story, y'all. Did she? <laughs> uh, I'm glad I looked before I did, cause I would have been talking about a whole four, about 15 minutes when I realized my Bahamas talk. I'm sorry, y'all. I knew it was gonna be long, but I didn't. You know, when y'all do, when you do, like, say, a podcast, like I use speaker for the app, uh, for example. And you have to, like, say, unless you're going to slide out, say, like, your phone and, like, look at the notifications, you know, um, thing, or go directly, say, to the app itself. You don't know the timing. It's not like, say, you go off and, you know, you can go off and see the timing, okay? Or it doesn't give, like, a notification if you leave it, you know? So what I mean is I just happen, thank God, to go and look at it and, uh, I, you know, like I said, I sure was reading. <laughs> so hopefully, if y'all want to read this and get that go, I mean, not read, but listen to this and go to sleep. Um, um, yeah, y'all. Yo, I didn't. I knew. I didn't. It was interesting. I'm glad I was able to read it, but I didn't know it was going to be that long. I plan on hopefully uh, be able to. If I read something that's long in the near future, 
you know, once I get some coins together, then I'll get the plan where I can just talk up to three hours. Because if y'all notice, I can walk, 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 and walk, keep talking, okay? So anyway, if y'all listen to both parts, thank you, I appreciate it. Because, excuse me, y'all. I spent during there actually an hour reading that whole thing. But anyways, I'm about to get go drink a little bit of water, go to bed, we'll meditate, pray, and then go to bed, y'all. And hugs and love, God bless. I will see y'all tomorrow. Stay safe, positive vibes, hugs and loves, positive vibes and energy. Stay safe, wash your hands, 20 seconds or more. Try to stay inside as much as you can. If you can, please, even if you got to make a homemade mirror and, you know, put some gloves on, whatever, when you go outside or whatever, if you do have to go out or, you know, we appreciate it. You do have to, you know, if you're a essential worker, if you know what I mean. And we're going to get through this, show with hugs on us. And thank you, y'all, for all the support. Thank you who even took the time to listen to this long, had to be cut in two darn parts. Um, which most of it was just one, which is one article. But anyway, y'all hugs and let's God bless, and I will see y'all next one.